So now we've uh, we've gone ahead and sanded this down. Um, we want it smooth. It doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, some of you out there may want it perfect, so go ahead. Um, but the next thing we're going to do is we're going to lay down uh, on our table here some rosin paper, and this is in preparation for coating that in carbon fiber. So this is pretty nice stuff. Just get a roll of it from Home Depot, and then I just like to tape it to the table. Don't worry, I'll speed this part up. So here's our windshield surround. You can see it's a lot uh, less floppy than it was when it first got set up with the 3D printing. And now we have the steel frame around it. Um, so we're gonna let the steel frame act as the um, support for this. Now, since I'm painting the car, um, I'm not too worried about how the carbon fiber lays down on this. If you are, you might want to take a little bit more time, maybe a few more coats of body filler, and then uh, get it really, really smooth. Um, and then afterwards, if you don't like the results, uh, what I've done on some of the other panels, uh, especially the uh, inlets for the turbos, is I did some more body filling after I infused it with the carbon fiber then come back and lay, do a hand lay of carbon fiber on top. And that can get you a much better finish if that's what you're uh, looking after. So we're gonna start setting up, and in the next part, you're gonna see us uh, putting on the carbon fiber. So we're just getting our supplies ready uh, for doing the carbon fiber. And um, one of them is this uh, 3M spray. It's just an adhesive spray, you can get it at Home Depot. Um, I go through cans and cans of this. Uh, you want to use this uh, in, very lightly. You don't want a whole lot. So you also want a good pair of scissors, heavy duty ones, um, and then And you also want to file, um, especially if you're doing the carbon fiber uh, Kevlar, um, because that really um, dulls the edges here, and so you'll want to file those down and get it sharp again. So those are kind of the tools. Um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to mask up because the fibers will get in your lungs and uh, make you cough a lot and maybe eventually lead to cancer. So wear one of these. Okay, you cut so this is the back side. You don't need to be too careful with this. And what we're going to actually do is we're laying down remnants in a crisscross pattern overlapping. That will give us some strength. So what we'll do first is we'll take our spray, the mask up, and we'll do a light, light, light spray across the entire part. It's important that you get all the nooks and crannies so you can really get the carbon fiber down in there. Even though we're doing the encapsulation or infusion, you want to start out with a part that has most of it, uh, it has most of the um, 
profile already pressed into it so you're not stretching the carbon fiber out when the vacuum bag pushes on it. Because if you do that, you could actually move the part or warp the part. Um, 15 pounds per square inch doesn't sound like a lot, but over this big of an area, it can be a lot of force. So you want to leave this out because we'll be using this as we overlay parts. We'll want to put some more of the uh, adhesive on to make sure everything. So this is the carbon fiber. You get it in a roll. Um, this is uh, commercial grade, as they call it. I get this from Composite Envisions. It's where I get all of my carbon fiber supplies. Um, and the mesh is, you know, a little bit see-through, so it's not really heavy. But I put about two layers of this on here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this over and we're going to start on the back side and we're going to use some of our um, some of our other carbon fiber that are actually um, the waste from other infusion processes. Alright, so we've got our remnant. We're actually going to use some of the carbon fiber Kevlar. Uh, let's see, it's a blue Kevlar carbon fiber. You've seen some of the other parts we've done. Pretty strong stuff, but we're going to lay that on the back side. And all we're going to do is we're gonna make sure we get it out into all the nooks and crannies. The reason I like this Kevlar as well is it's incredibly flexible. So it's real easy to get it into the nooks and crannies without having to cut it up. They're at regular carbon fiber, you really got a leaf cut just about everywhere. So you just kind of want to go over and find pieces that may work well in certain places so you can optimize your use of material. As I've stated before, this stuff is not cheap. So using all of your remnants is always a good idea. need to be too fussy. You've got really long fuzz hanging off. Don't even worry about it. It's just going to add to the strength of the paper. Now for those of you who want to spend twice as much on your fabric, you can get material like this called weblock, where you can see it doesn't really fray a whole lot, and it's real easy to cut, and you see it doesn't fray. This is really good for doing finishing work. So <clears throat> if you're having to do some hand lay of the carbon fiber, uh, this is some good stuff to get, but use it sparingly. It's about $35 a yard. So, But if you've got an unlimited budget, uh, that stuff just makes it real easy uh, to work with. So your choice. So once you get your part covered with your carbon fiber, two layers on each side, and uh, you use the front side and you wrap it around like this, then we're going to use this material, which is the mold release material. So this is called peel ply fabric. I uh, get this again from Composite Envision. Hose down your part with uh, some of the adhesive spray. And then go ahead and wrap this. Now you want to get all of the nooks and crannies with this stuff. If this stuff has like a, a hole or something or a, a web like this and it gets under vacuum and it gets taut, it will warp your part. Or <laughs> even worse, it will uh, actually destroy it. I know 15 psi doesn't sound like a lot, but it's uh, it can be quite destructive in the big area. Now 
this stuff doesn't have to lay perfectly flat. It can have little folds in it and stuff like that. I try to minimize that on the front side as it can leave um, some uh, epoxy lines and things like that. But again, I'm painting this car so it's not that big a deal. Um, use your scissors to do relief cuts. And it's okay to over layer this, but you, you will need to shoot it with a little bit more. A little more adhesive uh, spray. And this can also help to pull your carbon fiber tape as well. So once you got that done, you uh, need to start with the uh, So once you've got the fuel fly on and you've got it all nicely buttoned up, it's time to put on this, which is called Flow Media. And basically we're going to do the same exact thing we did with the fuel fly. It's a little harder to stick down, but um, if you get a good light coating of this, it should stick and then you can wrap it around. And at this point you can actually use some masking tape to tape it down. So let's get started. Okay everybody, so now we've got the infusion um, flow media uh, on the part. It's uh, this green stuff with all this tape on it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move to our bag. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a bag and then we're going to fold it over. Um, and then we're going to tape it with our sticky tape. You've seen me do this in other videos and then we'll uh, pull a vacuum on it. So let's get that started. So here we've put it in the bag. There's nothing special about it. And uh, we've taped three sides. And now we're pumping it out with our little vacuum pump. And make sure you clamp up the other hose. We have a hose that we're gonna use for putting the boxy in. And we have a hose that we're going to use for the vacuum. And then you want a catch can so that you don't just draw epoxy right into your poor little vacuum pump. So this is going to take a while because it's a pretty big part. Uh, it's going to take a while to get all this air out. So we're just going to wait. You know, once the, uh, most of the air gets out of the bag, it'll start happening fast. Um, so if you see any places where the bag is pulling on the part or any places where it's not getting where you want it, you want to adjust it now. Um, you can always turn the pump off and uh, let a little air in so that you can adjust the bag. And now you can hear the pump change its tune and it's starting to pull it out. You can watch the needle go up. Now, this is a relatively big part, so it takes a little while for it to get down to uh, vacuum. We 
and you want to be at about minus 29. Your, your gauge may differ a little bit uh, depending upon your altitude. We're at about 6,000 feet, so the atmospheric pressure is a little less up here. But you can see this really tightening up, starting to really pull into these areas. Now if you start hearing cracking and popping, um, that can be indicative of something going wrong. So be aware of that as you uh, work on this part. And just try to make sure that you, all this stuff, you can see how tight it pulls everything. Which is just awesome. So, next step. So we'll mix up our epoxy. Now, with the epoxy, no eyeballing it, no guessing. Uh, make sure you have a scale uh, for this particular process. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure out our epoxy and our hardener. And the hardener has a very specific by weight uh, measurement that we're going to do in this cup. And I do it always by weight. So we're going to mix this up and then we'll start infusing. Now I like to mix up about a kilogram of epoxy and hardener. Gives me a nice full cup here. And then what we'll do is we'll have another cup in reserve. And once this is all mixed up, we'll start infusing it. And once we do that, we'll see how it goes when it starts getting low and we'll see how far it makes it in the part. Okay, so we put our hose in here. I'm going to try to do this one handed. Now we're going to undo the clamp. And then you'll see the epoxy start running in there. And what will happen is it will start staining like that. It's important that the hose doesn't fall out. Once you get it in there, you might want to tape it up. But you can see the epoxy starting to flow. And it's going to flow around the part and hopefully towards the vacuum. And uh, when it gets to that point, I'll, uh, we'll be back.